What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a comparison of the speed and gaming performance of the iPhone 5 versus the iPod Touch 5th generation. Now to make this a fair fight, each devices are virtual clones of each other, both running iOS 6 with the same apps and settings. Now before I proceed, I just want to show you that I've closed down all the suspended and background apps. I also want to jump to my Safari settings to make sure that the cache and cookies have been cleared so that we have no preloaded content to skew the results. I'm also going to set the browser to private browser mode to prevent it from caching data during the test which will explain the dark UI color you're going to see. Now for the power cycle test both devices appear to boot up and shut down at about the same time so there doesn't appear to be any significant gains there. For our first benchmark we're going to check the Geekbench scores which will measure the overall hardware performance of each device and also reveal some of the system specs which Apple otherwise does not share such as CPU clock speeds. We can see that the iPhone 5 is sporting the dual core A6 processor clock somewhere north of 1 gigahertz, while the iPod is running a dual core A5 processor at 800 megahertz with half the RAM of the iPhone 5, which has 1 gig of RAM. This hardware difference means the iPhone 5 has more than double the score of the iPod Touch 5th generation. Now, although this sounds bad for the iPod, it's still twice the performance of the iPod Touch 4th generation, which only has 256 gigs of RAM and a single core A4 processor clocked at 800 megahertz. Now, as for graphics benchmarks, the iPod Touch 5th generation also resembles the iPhone 4S. Now, the on-screen tests look about the same, averaging 60 frames per second, but the off-screen tests show that the iPhone doubles the performance of the iPod. Now, for our third test, I'm going to use SunSpider to test the JavaScript rendering performance of Safari. And once again, we can see double the performance gains here with the iPhone 5 completing the test in less than 1,000 milliseconds, while the iPod Touch takes about 1,850 milliseconds. So we should see quicker load times uh, when we test this out. Now, a good way to test real-world performance is by comparing the cameras. Now, in terms of load times, the iPhone 5 is still quicker to launch, so it's ready to shoot photos ahead of the iPod Touch. Now, when it comes to taking photos, both cameras are very quick, but the iPhone 5 is quicker, so you can take photos as quickly as you can tap the screen. Now, the iPhone 5 is also quicker at snapping HDR photos, which is more demanding on the system than just snapping regular photos since it requires more system resources to composite the images. We also have to consider that the iPhone 5 5 is dealing with a higher resolution 8 megapixel sensor versus the iPod's 5 megapixel sensor. Another good test is video exporting with iMovie. Now in this test, I have identical 41 second long projects complete with transitions and music. Now exporting the project in 1080p HD on both devices reveals that the iPhone 5 is nearly twice as fast as the iPod Touch. Now these differences will also be magnified on export jobs which are significantly larger. Now a better way to test day-to-day -day performance is to see how quickly apps load. Now the differences here are pretty minor with both devices fairly evenly matched but the iPhone 5 is observably quicker so if we launch apps side by side you can see there is a slight difference this means the iPhone 5 feels quicker but the iPod hardly feels slow now in terms of Safari performance websites consistently load more quickly on the iPhone although mileage varies depending on network speeds the real performance gains are noticed when paging backwards and forward and you can see how much more quickly the iPhone 5 reloads the cache data than the iPod touch the additional RAM also seems to help with the state of closed apps. So for example, if we relaunch apps that I've loaded during this comparison video, you can see that the iPhone 5 has been able to preserve the state of more apps than the iPod, such as the Geekbench score I ran earlier, which has already been lost on the iPod while the iPhone is still hanging on to it. Games also load more quickly on the iPhone 5, but overall 3D performance looks and feels about the same with the games currently available. However, if we look really closely, we can see that the iPhone 5 is rendering significantly more detail and highlighting, which is best observed when looking at the sword of our character here in Wild Blood. So we can see significantly more detail on the iPhone than the iPod. But overall, both devices with those 4-inch retina displays appear closely matched. So in the end, while the iPod Touch 5th generation performance is closer to the iPhone 4S than the iPhone 5, it's still a big leap over the 4th generation iPod Touch. So that's going to do for me guys in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.